once again towards Fnatic. I mean, both teams are historically very strong on this map. Fnatic has been known for being the strongest in a period of time. I'm not sure if they are at that point yet, but it's just, I, I have a hard time saying where it's going to go. I feel like Fnatic, if they're bringing the momentum, they should win. But then again, the versus plow is waiting somewhere in the shadows. So which one are you picking? I'm picking Fnatic. I, I think <laughs> the last time I casted these guys, I think it was at a Gfinity event, and it was the best of three final, and they actually played on Cobble in that, and it was, it was Fnatic on the T side that actually got like a 12-3 result, and they looked so strong there. But that was a long time ago. Things changed, obviously. This is a much bigger event that the, the stage has been shifted. Look at the, the scale of this. They've been doing their homework. It's, it's really difficult to call. We haven't really seen... We actually have seen Virtus Pro on Cobble at this event, and I think they played immunity against it. They looked reasonably strong there, but hard to gauge where that lies when you go up against Mammoth, such as Fnatic. Yeah. Yeah, what about you, Moses? Yeah, I'm going to stick with Fnatic as well. I, there was a stretch where they were you know, 100% win rate on this map. And, and that was when, that was like earlier on when Olaf was still being that dominant self. So, I mean, he cannot have, especially on the T side where he's so integral in how he plays that platform over at the B bomb site. Um, but he can't have another bad game because this Virtus Pro is playing too well individually and as a team for Fnatic to overcome them without Olaf Meister. Yeah, exactly. It is like when you take different areas of the map, it's going to be the, the how to remain map control on the A area. It's going to be how they're going to try to peek off this drop zone because it's very difficult for the CTs to maintain control of this area in case that you're using smokes, molotovs, etc. All right, well, you can see on your screens all the players are ready in their stations. One last map to decide who gets to go up against Envy in the finals of ESL 1 Cologne 2015. Will it be Fnatic trying for that back-to-back -back title? Will it be VP turning on that Virtus Plow again and running towards the trophy? Let's find out on Cobblestone with our commentators. Thank you very much, Will. This is going to be insane. We've seen Cobble already, just as Henry was saying. We saw the form in which VP have taken on Cobble in the past. And now we get to do it. Third map here in our second semi-final. Fiflaren? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, like you're saying, Fnatic actually haven't played Cobblestone this event, but with VP had beating both Cloud9 and Immunity 16 to 8. And by no means is Cloud9 uh, a bad cobblestone team. They don't play it that much, but they still have a fundamental idea on how to play it. And VP, I mean, again, I actually somewhat favor VP on cobblestone here. The only thing that I can give Fnatic right now is that they, they, they will start on the CT side and hopefully Memento will just carry them over through and towards that grand final. But I mean, right now for me at least, it's 50-50 at this point in time. VP has actually been playing extremely good and it was so close for them to even come up with a 2-0 win here versus Fnatic. Yeah, it's a matter of who turns up now. We saw Fnatic finally getting to that Fnatic form at the end of that second map, pulling it back into their hands. But Virtus Pro have looked astounding. Who will find their form here? We need every member from Fnatic to finally make their impression. Olaf has to find that footing. Same can be said for Pasha, for Neo. These boys have to get to this game in peak condition. And ladies and gents, we are very close to this one starting. Soon, we will see how Cobble starts for these two teams. The desk can't call it, we can't call it. We're going to have to sit back, relax, and see what Fnatic vs Virtus Pro can do. I mean, this was a game, the fact that we got into him toward the middle of Inferno with the possibility of Virtus Pro winning this in two suggests just how close these two teams are matched here on stage. Yeah, and uh, just looking at the initial buy here coming in from VP, the game is paused, uh, but VP is obviously talking about what, what to do on this specific pistol round. And it does look to be a little bit more of a strategical approach uh, in favor of VP instead of just a regular having bumpers with a nade and then everyone else rushing. We will actually do see two players with nades instead. And so here we go, we're back into game. It's map three of our second semi-final. Fnatic up against Virtus Pro, the defending champions and the Polish side looking for retribution against the very side that knocked them out just the major prior. Here we go then, as already blood has been drawn. JW down to 58. As the CT side does look to have got a pretty good call on the numbers. They've got a good feel for where the T side is taking them. But what was that? Taz picks up a double. They're very, very low, but that's not stopping Pasha. 
Trying to find even more. Snacks gets one. All on to Flusher. He's got no help to work with. And Virtus Pro, the whirlwind into the B site. Yeah, and they start off the same way that did a Mirage and a very, very fast, aggressive fashion, just rushing that A bomb site, having two towards the drop zone, uh, using the, the Molotov just to hold off the Fnatic rotation and the one smoke, smoking off connector. Uh, Great run for, for Virtus Pro. I, I actually do like this approach a lot better because, yeah, they ended up losing Inferno, and the one mindset that should come in towards uh, the last map would be no fear. We, we are the better team on Cobblestone, and we're going to show it here today. Well, we're going to find out if they can keep this up. There was a quick pause there just to keep things in mind, and if they start off like Mirage went, it's going to be a bit of a strong scoreline, bearing in mind that Fnatic only managed to pick up six rounds in that one. So, once again, we're going back into this and looking at what we're going to be seeing. Fnatic are not going to take this one lying down. The game is live. We're back into it, of course. Verdes Pro picking up the first. Two rifles, three SMGs. And let's see what they can do here. Flaren, what do we make of what the CTs are going for? The CZs, the head armor. They're trying to make a go of this one. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's going to be a force buy. It's very common to do so on this map because you have these very narrow entrances that you can actually just use to your advantage on the CT side. I'm quite surprised though, that we won't see a scout. But, uh, but yeah, the C75s here, and obviously the deal on Crimson. We did, we did see that one shot on, on Inferno. Uh, but can they hold it off here? We do have three SMGs in favor of VP, so there will be a very fast and running play here. Yeah, and JW actually backed over towards A at the start here. Bialy is starting to look towards drop. JW comes back, shows presence. But while this happens, Pasha is building towards that platform side. Crims with the deal we saw he was. Marvelous with that before, but Bialy will find JW by drop, and that's going to open up this map. Olaf and Flush are going to start pulling themselves in towards B, but now, here we go, that's the Crims we're looking for. Already getting down one, but Pasha gets it back, and now Pronax tries to overwhelm Taz. He does it. They picked up two kills already, they've got one rifle away, and now Pronax has to go big, but look who's behind. Neo says hello, recovers the rifle, and Virtus Pro get the bomb down, they recover the rifles, they're back in control. Yeah, and uh, Fnatic actually bought, bought a bunch of smokes and they kept on re-smoking the B entrance and then they ended up stacking that bomb site as well. For VP there, it could have ended so much more, uh, so much worse, but then they ended up winning the round anyway. Yeah, sure, they lost a bunch of members, but when it comes to force buys in general, all that matters in reality is winning the round. It doesn't matter if you have five pe people alive or one person alive, just having that one round win is key. So Taz picks up a double. He's going to continue with a potential triple, but Pasha helps him out with that one as the bomb will be going down as well. Fnatic investing nothing into this round, and looks like Virtus Pro are going to be able to do it neat and tidily to secure the first three. We saw what happened over on Inferno. VP got the first three and the last three. We'll see if things can change. And so it does look it's going to be going in a similar fashion. Then again, Olaf and Flusher making it a little bit more expensive. Yeah, and I mean, the SMGs, they can end up dying. It's just having, if all of my gets one kill with, uh, with the SMG now, that's actually quite bad. Flush has to be careful, but fortunately, Siali saves the day, as does Neo. That's going to be 3-0, though, and Virtus Pro start as they mean to go on. Yeah, and if Fnatic wants an AWP here, it's only going to be Crims that can drop on, but he does not, so we won't see an AWP on, on Fnatic and we will not see an AWP on the Virtus Pro side, which makes sense because the, the past three rounds here for Virtus Pro, the first three rounds, has been very, very aggressive coming in from them, and I do not think that that's going to stop now. Yeah, we are going to be seeing JW with that rather infamous Mag 7 that he does pick up when he plays towards drop, and once again, he will be lurking around there, but if Virtus Pro goes fast, they have been. This could be a very quick round, but with that utility, they have to be a little more cautious. They may have to take their time on this, Yet still, they'll leave Neo over by A. They're not going to put all their eggs in one basket here. Yeah, and it's going to be the same approach. Since they actually force bought uh, the second round again, tonight they don't have that much nades. They only have two smokes left and one mall top, and you also have a max send up on JW. And Olaf Meister is actually already over by B. These guys are making this fairly obvious. Olaf, Flash are all there, but look at the T side. They're starting to pour out. JW backed away. He's on the site. They're going to retract back as much as possible, but Snacks and Taz are already out. There's still a minute on the board. Verse Pro could still head over towards A if they fancied it, but they have got players out there going to look towards maybe using drop here. Crims fine catches a glimpse. Platform is starting to be favorable towards Fnatic. JW finally gets in there. Pronax as well finding snacks. And just Bialy and Neo left alive. But Bialy does at least get one. But three players now against him. Fnatic shouldn't allow him a chance here. But tell me this is not going to happen. Bialy gets two. 
this should not be possible. JW and Flusher not peeking just yet. JW does get the rifle. 25 seconds. Bialy. Don't give me a heart attack. He's got the bomb. JW and Flusher, they're, they're not playing this aggressively. They're taking their time on this one. They're playing it very safe, which is very smart in this situation. Oh, he's faked the bomb. He's going to take the challenge. Flusher says no and gets Fnatic on the board in the first gun round. Yeah, and you, see, you saw the same situation that Fnatic was, uh, had uh, on Inferno that they had now, where they don't have that many nades. And if VP would have just waited out a little bit more time, they had plenty of, of time to work with. They ended up, up going, towards the, uh, going out towards the bomb site at around 55 seconds left, and Fnatic had no more, no more nades left. If they were wait, would have waited like another 10 seconds and still had this one guy in mid, that would have forced Fnatic to at least fall, have one more player towards that bomb site, just uh, only having to fight three. And you build from there. Fnatic reminding Virtus Pro that they are going to be ever present here on Cobble. And they do look to be kind of boosting up. They actually opted instead of the Galil to take the Mag 7 up into that close quarters area on platform. GW just edging away from the HG, trying to take minimal damage down to 86. Virtus Pro, same again. They do have Molotovs 3 to be precise. That's going to enable them to clear those corners that can be so deadly on B. But in the meantime, Fnatic is going to start catching wind of where this bomb is going to be going. Smoke completely obscures Olaf Meister. He's out of this one. He's forced to back away. It's going to come down to what Crimson JW can piece together. And that smoke, that's going to be dissipating very, very soon. And it's going to be exposing the Versus Pro attack, throwing in a couple of shells towards that smoke. It does actually connect, but at distance. Yeah, Vipin is really not getting anything done here, but here we see the push. Yeah, it's going to be JW and Pronax who respond. VP taking too much time, it seems, as four frags. Olaf Meister puts the bow on it, and that's going to be a very simple second for Fnatic. What went wrong there, Fifth Larry? Yeah, actually, when, uh, when, when uh, Flipside was playing against Luminosity, uh, yes, two days ago, they had the same kind of approach to the game that VP has right now, is that they don't really take map control. They have five or five guys just stationed in B, just waiting for the smokes, and then you see Fnatic just instantly rotating. They have four towards the B bomb site at all times, and Flush Eye is already in connector. So basically, Virtus Pro are fighting five players at the same time. They need to be able to spread out at the beginning, just make sure that Fnatic doesn't just overly rotate towards the B-bomb side, and then you can end up hitting it if you want. And the last time we saw Virtus Pro kind of falling into this kind of rinse and repeat trap, but they were still being able to keep attention towards A. Neil did have the AWP. He was actually keeping people, certainly paying attention towards him. JW there going to have, you know, make light work of pretty much anyone against him. The only one really with a chance maybe Taz to hit a couple of one digs, but highly improbable. But they are at least going to try the A site. And they can be met with brute force. But I'm hoping we see something a little bit more uh, varied from Virtus Pro here. As Taz, Snacks, and Neo are going to have to face the music and not going to get anywhere. This time, Fnatic keeping numbers, keeping them at arm's length. And we're back, tied up all even. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I do uh, I agree with what you're saying. So right now, they actually did try the two weapon rounds that Fnatic had weapons. They tried to go towards B, and they tried to just wait it out and then ended up just losing the rounds. This round, I'm hoping that VP will just end up just doing a regular default first, first just trying to get uh, some aim duels uh, onto Fnatic, because they've proven from time to time again that they can actually win these battles and just give them the advantage that they may need to win yet another round on the T side here. So. Where does this one leave us? It does seem like the uh, Versus Pro side is trying to steer away from what you were just talking about. As you can see what Neo has got in store for us or not. Olaf Meister's there. Bialy trades it out. Pasha in the meantime did find Pronax. And how on earth has the T side seized so much control? Previous round they had nothing. Now they have everything. The bomb swarming towards A. And it's only on GW and Crims who were, of course, those two defenders on B. They pull their socks up and try and get close towards the site. But the control has been completely relinquished. And now, with the bomb down, time is against him as well. Yeah, might as well save here. Bomb down, two on three situation. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, VP, uh, good good call uh, for VP there. Just doing, having three members drop in the drop zone and then jumping through connector, catching off my drop uh, off guard. Yeah, he, he got one, but then all of a sudden, VP had full control of connector. Then one more Fnatic member ended up dying in mid, and then they just left A completely open. They had connector, and Fnatic, they had nothing. And, and what do you make of Olaf then going that aggressive? He actually kind of started to try and maybe gather information, knowing Neo's been the only man there, but Bialy, of course, joining in that round. Is this something maybe Virtus Pro is starting to get aware of, that maybe you're going to see someone get aggressive and want to push out, get more information? Was it just a nice read from them? 
Uh, I mean, it was the same thing that I was calling about Luminosity when uh, when they were playing against Flipside. If you have one member just uh, being aggressive on the A bomb side, if you don't see anyone, it's a, obviously a, it's very given that they will just end up going 5B, and then you can just instantly rotate everyone. He can even be flanking. So it was it was uh, somewhat of a gamble. It didn't pay off this round, and now I'm fairly sure you won't see Fnatic doing that again. Yeah, I want to keep my eyes on. I'll see if he fancies it again, but at the moment, Valus Pro going back to doing what looks like they do best on occasion. But, however, but look at this, they've still already, Fnatic have four players already by that B side. Don't get me wrong, Olaf's not far away, but he's already supporting these guys. I, I'm kind of hoping Neo gets a little bit more time to work towards Flash or possibly. They go charging towards this, they could maybe start working towards drop here and get the advantage, but still, Crims and JW are going to be put up towards that platform. From Verlas Pro. Looking for their next move. Yeah, exactly the same approach that Flat Flips I had. We do see the push here coming in. Oh, but look at Neo, look at Snacks, look at Taz. They're in a great little spot here. JW still holding platform. He's not seen much, but Neo, Snacks, and Taz have worked their way towards drop. They're looking for something here. Snacks gets out towards the side. JW down. Crims swings his attention, but now we're seeing finally the power of drop. Neo comes in. Great play coming out from Valence Pro here. And now Flush, a lost man standing stuck by those doors. Nade goes out. We oh, hear yeah, much from it, sadly, and now the three players remaining for Virtus Pro can be pleased with what they achieved that round. Yeah, a great round by VP. Uh, the main difference with Fnatic there, why, the reason why they could not hold this round was that they didn't have anyone stationed holding the drop zone, and F F Virtus Pro had three members there, so they were just wait waiting it out, playing it very passive, and then by the time they decided to push out, that's when they just sandwiched Fnatic all together, and obviously massive amounts of headshots as well. Neo with, a, uh, with an amazing two kill, and leaving Flush out. Six HP, no point in trying to go for it, especially considering that the, the fact that Fnatic, they are running somewhat low on money. They can probably force by here if they want to, if they want to still uh, keep this close in the game, or they can choose to just perhaps save. But I'm going to call it that they, they, will, they will end up buying here. Just they have the uh, yeah, lack, lack of uh, money for Olaf, and drop does come in from that save. AK, and here we go then, folks. There is an AWP in play. Neo is the one to pick it up. And you can see the Polish crowd still. Still, they haven't stopped chanting since before this game even started. The mere concept that Virtus Pro would soon be on stage. And they were making noise. Now, though, let's see where this round takes us as something different brought out from Virtus Pro. Yeah, I really like this. Neo actually have an off now as well, and they're actually pushing A long instead, leaving Pasha. But you see, look at JW. Oh. Pasha. Okay, great job. Pasha is supposed to be holding the flank there. If JW would have snuck through, there will have been a lot of angry Polish people in that VP team. Now, where do you build off the back of that Pasha? Picking up that frag has actually kind of started somewhat of a rotate from Virtus Pro. Feeling like they can kind of build off the back of that, try and keep Fnatic on their toes, keep them guessing. There's three players still sticking on that A site. Yeah, there's a great call from VP. Pasha getting the, uh, the, uh, the pick there onto JW and then just going fast out B here. There's no one here holding for Fnatic. It's all onto Pronax. He's only got so little health and Pasha ensures it as he does connect. All onto Crims to try and claw this one back. But there's a smoke at the doors and that is going to be a planted bomb. It's going to come down to what the three remaining Fnatic players can build off of this one. Neo does miss the shot, but in the meantime, you can see that Fnatic have made the executive decision to back away, accept their, cut their losses, and that's going to be six for Virtus Pro. Yeah, again, Virtus Pro being extremely Ooh. smart. Taz is hunting. He wants to take it's as much as he away from Fnatic as he can, and he does. As that's two now down, Olaf Meister lucky to be alive and he may not be for much longer because Bialy is on the hunt. That's beautiful. Nothing for Fnatic in that round. And Virtus Pro maintain four. Yeah, and f again, we saw this on Mirage as well. We saw this on their T side uh, for Virtus Pro on Inferno also when it comes to being very unorthodox. You had Pasha there, they just switched it up. Having Pasha only the only player on the B area and then just trying to hold so they don't flank. JW didn't see anyone, rushed down. But when he went down, Pasha just called and said, well, I don't see anyone. There's no smokes, there's nothing. You just try and go here back again. And then BP, obviously Fnatic took a gamble on second A, did not work out. And BP once again just reading Fnatic. This is beautifully done from Virtus Pro. Started a little shaky. We thought they were just kind of throwing bodies towards that B site, but once they started to find that form, started to really lead Fnatic around, they've got themselves back towards this game. However, looking at this round, Fnatic 
have a couple of weapons. Not a great deal to work with, just those P250 CZs. There's four players by B. Pasha is going to have to systematically undo this Fnatic side. And already JW getting a face full, try and do the boost by drop. And here we go. Pasha gets Crims. Piece by piece, Fnatic should fall here. Olaf already on the rotate, gets found by Taz. Snacks watching drop. This should be a very clean round. Yeah, it's only Pasha that might end up going down here. But for VP again, just basing off of their money, they don't have that much money to, to begin with. So having most of their players staying alive here is very crucial. Yeah, highly important. Pronax did manage to take down Snacks, but I think that's all she wrote. Pronax did get the AK at least, so he does retrieve some weapons. Yeah, and for Fnatic, again for Fnatic now as well, you see the, 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 their approach to the game right now is basically stacking four players towards B and just having Flasha, Flasha circling around the A area. Uh, this one round, they, yeah, they, they took a gamble towards A because they, they're, they're overthinking the situation. They're thinking, well, okay, VP has hit the B bomb site so many times now, they must be going A. And then instead of the fact that just playing very defensive, you had JW instead pushing, and that was a mistake. You should not push when you're trying to, uh, to sack the other side. Because when you go down, <laughs> that's when the VP members start rotating back instead. All right. Let's see what Fnatic can bring out this round. They really don't want to let First Pro start that ball rolling. Because let's bear in mind, the start of this, you know, it was going First Pro's way. Then Fnatic got the three back to back. But now, since then, Virtus Pro have had four rounds. Bomb plants basically throughout the vast majority. But Olaf Meister has found the orb. However, Neo on the other side doing the same thing. This could change it all, but Snacks straight away taking down Crims. Straight through Connector, Olaf finds him. That's going to signal where he is. Flusher might have caught a glimpse there, not too sure. He backs away. The T side starting to pour through towards the A side. They're all here. Flusher stopping him as they walk up. But Bialy with a 1 for 1 trade, but Olaf joined by Pronax, swatting them away. Great shot from Olaf comes out. And it's now just down to Neo. 1v3. Smoke goes down, he's got one minute to do this, he's got spotted, he's surrounded, and Pronax says no to Verse Pro's reign. They get back into this, and a big round coming out for Olaf then. Yeah, and Virtus Pro actually just really abusing the drop zone every single round they can, and then it was just, it was really crucial for Fnatic there, for Ulf to get that one kill uh, on the person in the drop zone, because Crimson ended up going down. If, if Ulf would have died there, it would have been game over again. Virtus Pro would have gotten a free round red yet again on the A-bomb side, but instead he gets two very crucial kills, and it's keeping them in the game. Olof does catch a glimpse of a few nades thrown towards the doors and backs away. Well, it stays defensive off the back of that one. Pasha could not see Mikri any closer to that peak, and the Molotov still not quite touching him from the safety of that smoke. And so, DP relying on the acting skills of Pasha to try and keep Fnatic at B, because there most definitely is another plan, but Olof is the one who very well has the capabilities to dash those plans or not. Neo connects the shot, winning on that AWP duel, and now very well could be crunch time for Fnatic. I think decisions are starting to be made. You can see Crims pulling his socks up and rotating. Yeah, and he, he only saw Neo as well, and I, I, I would be upset if I was uh, Olaf Meister. That timing <laughs> that Neo ended up peeking at just ends up losing him the duel, and it's a 5 on 4, and it looks to be another A play coming in for Virtus Pro. And Molotov doesn't catch Krim, so they, they have no idea he's there. They're going to assume that corner's clear, which could prove fatal to Virtus Pro. 30 seconds and the bomb still not down, but Taz takes a step in the right direction. Looks like Crims is going to make it difficult for Bialy, though. That's now all on to Neo and Pasha. Pasha pays a heavy price for that frag. In fact, so much so, he is now down. All on to Neo to do what seems impossible. Just the oh! What was that? Blows Crims out of the water and now it's a 1v1. 10 seconds, the bomb is a priority. He's gonna be punching the digits in and now with it down, he has the ball to play for. Pronax saves the day with two. And oh my God, is this an intense semi-final. I almost pissed myself. What was that? <laughs> Seriously, God, okay. I think I need a pause from that, from that shot. Good job from Pronax in that one-on-one -on -one situation. He actually did not fire the bullet when he jumped over this one. How... How do you do that? How do you like, even know, Neo? Yeah. Please. What but yeah, Pronax did not shoot the, the initial bullet. If he would have done that, if he would have been a little bit more stressed, shot the first bullet there, Neo would have just fake planted, and then you might have ended up in a way worse situation for Fnatic. Sometimes, you know, it's not exactly how many kills you have. Sometimes just that one kill, that one play you make be so important, and that was one of them to keep Fnatic in touching distance here. JW this time will find Pasha first of all. 
But Neo, just with the scout here, this could be a lot tougher to work with. Yeah, and uh, Virtus Pro with uh, almost somewhat the same approach as they had before. You see Flush actually just pushing. And this is what I'm saying. The call now is like, okay, guys, just fall back towards B. You see all of the remaining Renek members just pushing back towards B. They have four, and Flush is just holding. But no one's holding Connector, though. Is anyone watching drop? Okay, JW have, is holding. Two. There we go. Finally, the holding factor there. Otherwise, that could be another round. We see Virtus Pro try and abuse that. And soon enough, surely they're going to work out that someone's surely gathering oh, information. Wow. Oof. He almost burned himself, himself there. That was a little bit of a... He's down to 6 HP. Yeah, from his old model, Tom. <laughs> hey, at least one of them was keeping it cool in the previous round. JW, not so much so. But still, 40 seconds left. 5v4. Fnatic have the numbers. The HP is low, however. And Fnatic know exactly where Virtus Pro are going. It's going to come down to maybe a little bit of Virtus Pro hitting these beautiful shots that they can do if they want to get this site there. But here we go. This is going to be where it's proven. Olaf already finding snacks. He's going to be holding Vigilant here at the back of site. But Neo with the scout comes up big, but it's just down to Bialy now. Pronax is low. JW is low. He gets the tag towards Flush. He gets the prize. He can't do any more. But my god, that was close. JW 6 HP. Pronax 12. That could have gone either way then. But still, Fnatic keep this close. But Verse Pro are just in the lead. Yeah, and uh, Virtus Pro, again now, they should be saving coming into the last round of the half. But you saw there, as I was saying, Flush are just pushing out towards the A area, the A long. He had full control. That's why you saw four Fnatic members just waiting out and be just wait, 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 even though Fnatic, Virtus, Pro, Virtus Pro took their time, and then Flush is just flanking. It was close, but at the end of the day, it was round win for Fnatic, and there was a very uh, given execute round from Virtus Pro. My heart is beating at unhealthy rates right now. <laughs> Let's see what this VP Swarm can do. Four of them, just P250s to their name. But Olaf Meister deals with it very, very cleanly. That's going to be Flusher, who does exactly the same. And it's going to be just Neo left to watch by the wayside as Flusher puts a bullet to his head. 7-7 seven, seven, then as the equalizer does come in. And this half has been turbulent, to say the least. Yeah, and just basically, just looking at what has worked for Virtus Pro, obviously, most of the B rounds has worked. They, they had one uh, A split round that worked as well. The normal A rounds actually have never worked a single time for them. If Fnatic knows this, if they pay attention to that, then chances are they might just be looking into just trying to take a gamble here towards the B area. No, it worries me when I see Virtus Pro starting off like this with thoughts like that already. Four players looking towards the safe site. However, it's Flush from JW this time, so boosting Leave JW up towards that small balcony. And Flusher could be the one on the precipice of that smoke, but Pasha is still by B, so keeping some attention there. Flusher, he's gonna spot them as they pour through that smoke. It's gonna be JW to greet them at the doorway. He takes down one in the hands of Flusher as well, but there we go. Two for one exchange in favor to Fnatic. It looks like this round should go their way. Yeah, smart play by Fnatic. You're taking a gamble again, just stacking into A long. And you saw the VP members as well there, just trying to take control of the map and then just getting shut down completely. And overall, it, it's a really good comeback from Fnatic, getting the remaining five runs out of half, which is exactly what they need. I mean, seven rounds already on the T side for Virtus Pro, ending up winning the pistol, them, and then during the lead, and then it, it's just a, a massive amount of climb for Fnatic incoming on their T side on, on this map. I think Bialy might have just got spot. Oh my god, Bialy! Scalps Pronax. This should be purely impossible, however. Bearing in mind there's still a nade. There's still two players against him. He's going to get the bomb down. Olaf and Krims should be able to do this. Might just try and leave sight here. The fire comes out. Olaf will find him. And Fnatic regain the lead going into the second half. Yeah, and uh, again, overall... For both Fnatic and VP, I'd say it was a very, well, obviously it was a very even half. But for VP, I felt that they could have, they could have actually had a lot more rounds uh, in their favor if they were to just, whenever they were to execute B, to at least have either Neo or someone else just to hold mid for just a little bit longer, show your presence so Fnatic doesn't over-rotate towards that B area. And then for Fnatic's point, they put a lot of pressure on the B bomb side in the beginning. It did didn't really pan out, but then obviously they got money screwed a little bit, forced on a save, ended up losing a few more rounds. Uh, but all in all, uh, very solid comeback for Fnatic and for VP now. 
getting the pistol is going to be something that they are looking for. And I do believe we might be seeing somewhat of an aggressive play here from their side as well. I think we're seeing a bit of an aggressive crowd as well. This is split in two. We've got the Polish fans going wild in the crowd. My God. Furless Pro have a lot of fans out there they need to step up for here. If Fnatic wins, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving this area. Yeah, I running. think we're, we're going to have like a brawl. Hell away. We're going to put someone else on that on that job later. <laughs> Security? Anyone, please help. Oh, it's hopefully all in good fun here. But of course, Fnatic do take the lead in this one, Alex. They're up 8-7 to seven here. Let's bear in mind, it seemed like no one really believed in Virtus Pro at the start of this. There was, there was always a chance, there was always the idea that Virtus Pro could be the team to do this. But the practicality of it really coming through was so slim. But they've looked good in this, haven't they? They have been on top form, and there's no doubting that. We said already that Fnatic have most definitely been playing very well in the earlier stages of this tournament. Struggling to look particularly challenged up until this, and this is going to be this is proving to be Fnatic's biggest challenge yet. This is the first team to take a map off them here. Now we'll see if they can do one better. Virtus Pro, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Dreamhack, we saw them. Third, fourth finish. Katowice, we saw them. Third, fourth finish. And this cobblestone map could be the game changer. Well, and VP actually, look at their buy. They're having actually four members with grenades, only tasked with the armor. And that is very unorthodox. And then on the other side, you obviously have uh, a smoke and a flashbang on Flusha. All right, guys and girls, this is what could be the final half here between these two. Fnatic on eight, and oh my god, already sheer aggression coming out from Virtus Pro. Flusher at the top of mid has just shattered their dreams. Neo goes down, but Taz comes back in. Blow for blow here, Alex. Taz and Bialy then left with it all to do, and the bomb most definitely is going to be planted courtesy of Pronax. The two CTs are pretty spread as well. They certainly don't, certainly don't have safety in numbers at this point. And Fnatic looks to have started as they mean to go on. Even seeing the boost as well, which is going to enable him to creep and crawl his way. JW's been gifted the perfect positioning. Why are we not looking at that? Because he comes straight behind Viali. In the meantime, Taz takes down Pronax. And then time does look like it's going to be causing too much of an issue for Taz. Just hopefully trying to do something to gain some respect. But no, Olaf says no. 9-7 going to be the score. And Fnatic securing a solid start in the second half. Yeah, and as I said, Virtus Pro trying something very aggressive, only having Taz with the armor. I don't really understand the approach. At least have two or three members, the ones that's going to be pushing to have an armor, pushing down middle, and then either drop them a weapon or two if you want to don't keep the nades. But here we do see a force by coming in from Virtus Pro. Will it work? And obviously a shotgun at JD, but I'm not he's quite... He's got the Kraken. I'm not even surprised. No, he's about to release the Kraken. Let's find out what he can do with this one. It, it's Let's be honest, on the other side, he'll just hold it with the Mag 7, so why not, I guess, right? Then again, you know, Virtus Pro have to now deal with this, Alex. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> this seems to just be JW uh, doing what JW does best. Uh, I've been intrigued to see how far he can get with it. There is just one head arm on the CT side. Crim's already demonstrating how potent he can be with a rifle. As he does take down Snacks without a point of damage being exchanged. 9-7. And still, we see Virtus Pro holding the T side back. Three on that B side, one over towards A. Yeah, Snack shouldn't even have pushed for to begin with there. I understand it might be just a little scout uh, scout call, but when you do have a force buy, why waste the money? Damn, Bialy finds the head of Olaf. And we could very well have a round on our hands here. Not looking at, doesn't look like they're going to be retrieving it just yet. JW still tentative towards that drop room, despite there being no presence there. Now 35 seconds, things are going to start heating up here, up here, Lauren. Yeah, they certainly are. And this should be a walk in the park for Fnatic. Nothing should stop them. Pronax with the double, just barreling through. The Kraken gets tamed by Taz. But now 3v2 situation here. I don't know how they're letting it slip this far. Neo, last man alive, P250. Bomb is down. Two rifles still in play. One in the hands of Crims, one in the hands of Flusher. And Pronax with the uh, Mac Daddy. But... This should never have felt this close. I don't know why it felt like such a threat that Bialy really disrupted Fnatic. Yeah, and uh, I mean, again, VP actually did take the gamble there on stacking the B bombs. They only have Neo on the A, on the A bomb side. Snacks, though, I, I'm not quite sure still why he decided to push that B hallway. He could have just stayed together. And if he did that, then VP would have had a very good chance of even winning the round. There we go. In pairs, we see them. 
Victor Crims will manage to keep hold of his rifle. Take down Neo. And Fnatic 10 to 7 now, not far away from what could be them getting to the final against Envy. Virtus Pro, however, once again going to have to sit through this round with very little to work with. Yeah, basically nothing. We're going to have two P250s in Virtus Pro's hands on Tas and Bialy. Everything else will be, and Neo as well, but everything else will be a strict, straight up uh, eco round. So for Fnatic here, just go fast and just make sure you don't lose any weapons. Yeah, Fnatic are aware of it as well. You can see the SMGs being stuck out for Pronex and Olaf are the ones rocking the Mac 10 it looks like JW is just going to go on a mission. He's desperate to show that this is a viable choice. And oh, he does! Through the smoke, Pasha takes a shell to the chest. And the B side has been left vacant for the Fnatic side. They're going to be getting that bomb down and getting that round on the board. As it comes down to uh, just a few pistols, what, they, what can you do with a PT-50 like that? Just try, hopefully take, you know, the shotgun out of JW before he does any more, anything flashy. It looks like Pronex is going to do all the work for him or not. As Snax does pick that one up and GW finds his second. Surely not a third. As he's desperately going to be picking it up. And oh dear, I worry about matchmaking now. We're going to be seeing a whole lot more sword off. As now just has a near. I think he's doing that to... Um just to raise the flag with me here, because obviously my, my fake nick was released to Crackler, and, and uh, I, I do believe that they made this weapon for me as well. I'm taking all the credit for that weapon, <laughs> for that weapon, and for the JW buying that weapon. Oh, he nearly took it out of JW's hands. But that was four for JW in that round, and the unarmored, unbought up Virtus Pro fall under JW's shotgun. Yeah. All right, this this is the big round for Flaren, surely. You know, this this is where we're going to see if really Virtus Pro can challenge Fnatic. Fnatic on paper were always the favourites here. Virtus Pro found some fire and they brought a game, but this could define so much. And JW still has that. Yeah, it's actually really good at the drop zone uh, because it's somewhat close quarters and it's a one hit. Look at this. Oh, Ooh. not going to work out today. Nice try, JW. Taz will happily once again knock you back. But looking at what Fnatic are up to, they're very aggressive. They're so far ahead on A. Neo's kind of behind them. Snax is holding down on the site. Olaf goes down. Now everyone's getting over here. Crimson Pronax making their cross. Snax knows it. Great little pop flash to allow him out. The Molly comes in, but he's crossed. Crims almost didn't expect that. He finally deals with the threat, but Neo behind. Pasha and Bialy still to work with this one. Bomb is down, though, and this is going to get close already. 2v2. This is down to the wire this round. Pasha looking in. He's going to make the shot. Oh, Flusher! Just absolutely decimates Pasha there, out of nowhere. And now Bialy is stuck. He can't get back into this one. The clock's ticking. He doesn't even have a kit in this, and already Flusher playing it so damn smart. And Bialy knows what's up. Crims is not letting him get away. Fnatic are back in form. Wow, yeah. And, uh, what a comeback that round from Fnatic. Virtus Pro really had everything under control, but then Flusher with an, with an insane headshot. And quite surprised that, that Bialy's uh, bullets did not hit Flusher there when he was jumping over. But yeah, nonetheless, very fast round coming in from Fnatic on the A-bomb site. JW was just basically a like puppet jumping down the drop zone, doing whatever he wants as per usual. But at the end of the day, Fnatic wins the round, and 12 to 7 in favor of Fnatic, VP on a save. Virtus Pro yet to find a footing in this CT side here on Cobble. JW again, he's rebought that after his failings in the previous round, and this just feels like salt into the wound of Virtus Pro. A team not that prone to tilting, but I know I'd get, be getting pretty irate. Then again, Bialy does take it out of his hands and begins to wield it himself as this is now a 4v3, courtesy of Olaf Meister and his AK. Damage done to Krims, and actually, excuse me, that was Hechi onto Olaf as he finds by Bialy. And just has a near run it, roaming around with 5-7s. Doesn't look like they're going to be finding too much more. No, and uh, for VP, yeah, you see here Neon just trying to cause a havoc, but Taz as well, we're going down. And VP... They do have the money to work with, but uh, it's cutting it close now. They need to put a stop on, on Fnatic. But let's bear in mind now, Fnatic are just a couple of rounds away from making it to the grand final themselves. Virtus Pro need to step up now. This is where they have to shine. They cannot allow Fnatic any more room to breathe. Let's see what they can do. Already a double orb out to play. This is the first time we're seeing it in this game. Yeah, both uh, Pasha and Neo. Neo tried to go a little bit aggressive on the A, a long, but then chooses to fall back a little bit at least. 
I do like this approach because then Neo here, he has full control over A and then you will have yeah. uh, heavily stacked versus Pro on the B bomb side. As soon as Neo sees someone, you will have C snacks, rotate back to try and help him out. Yeah, he's going to hear Flusher spamming away, but Snacks is falling back as well, just in case. They're not going to leave anything up to chance here. Fnatic not rushing this. Flusher, Pronax, Crims over by A. We've got Olaf and JW by B. And does this look like an A split again, or do you think they're going to just fake it out and try and rotate back to B? I think just trying to take a little bit of control first, because if they were to A split, they wouldn't have two players alone with the bomb. So I think that we might just be seeing just a little bit of a set control, might be a fake, and then just end up going towards that B bomb site. See what they go for here. Olaf is starting to test the waters by drop. There are four players from Verse Pro, though. Fairly close to this B site, and we're going to have to see if Olaf can actually make something out. This Snacks is waiting on the other side. If Olaf jumps up here, he is a dead man walking. Let's see what he does. Patience, maybe a virtue flash comes out. Here we go! Oh! Olaf is an absolute mastermind! Flashing underhand out the window, leaving Virtus Pro in dire straits. It's down to just Taz. Fnatic are once again looking dominant. He gets one. He gets the tag on the second, but he cannot get the frag. And Fnatic once again looking dominant. It's time for a timeout, it seems. Yeah, and uh, Virtus Pro getting completely outplayed there. You saw Neo pushing out the down middle with his AWP because he was like, I can't see anyone. Then you had three Fnatic members. You see, look at this. He peaked before it popped. It's so smart because he had Snacks' back turned, had enough time to get his crosshair aimed, and a beautiful pickup from Olaf. Yeah, uh, yeah, overall, Fnatic just playing remarkably very well on this T side, having six rounds in their bag so far, and Virtus Pro, they don't have an ass for it, and obviously, yeah, they will play for, for the win with a force by having three rifles and Mag-7, and we'll see what Tass chooses to buy, but yeah, it's, it's do, or, do or die now for Virtus Pro. And as said, whether you love Fnatic, whether you hate them, you have to respect the way these boys play. They came back in from an absolute thrashing on map one. They had a close game in map two, and now they're starting to find the form we know Fnatic can be on. Mirage feels so long ago. This has been a best of three to remember. Versus Pro witnessing what Fnatic were capable of on the end of Inferno, and they look to have just done exactly the same here on Cobblestone. Virtus Pro yet to pick up a round, still on the defensive side, and they have to try now to do what they couldn't do with a full buy with whatever they've managed to scrape together. And here we go. Snacks is going to be tested, and that's going to be crucial. Two quick frags. Crimson Flusher forced to watch the rest of this round as Pronax, Olof, and GW have a oh, bit of a mountain to climb in this round. Olof into drop. He should have the advantage. What? Bialy was holding the perfect angle, but surely not going to get a second. He's down to eight. Taz hungry for this one. He knows Olaf is low. He knows he's vulnerable, but instead backs away. And Snacks goes for the reaping. Olaf, too damn smart. 3v3 as this round has not stopped. Taz now is the one to find the frag. Does stop Olaf from finding a third frag this round. And VP still trying to keep these sites safe. Pronax and JW are together. Let's see if they can be the deadly duo, because Pasha is on the hunt. With the Mag-7 just below him. Pasha casts his eyes and turns away. What could have been hindsight being another step closer for Virtus Pro's first CT round does not happen in time. Down to 30 seconds. Yeah, and look at this. Like, Pronax is actually just clearing out the whole B-bomb side now, so you will see JWs walking out as well, getting the getting the bomb plant, and after plant 2 on 3 situation, but they are actually sandwiched. Taz has to drop, Neo will rotate back again as well, and, Ta and Pasha is obviously flanking from, from behind. What have you got for us? JW starts with a level playing field as Taz bites the dust, as oh my god, what just happened? Pronax found the frag onto Pasha in the blink of an eye, and now Neo has to try and do something! No! Is the answer, Pronax gets it, and JW is cheering! There's emotion creeping onto the faces of Fnatic as they are now just one away from giving an opportunity to defend their title. Yeah, and I must say, the, all of Meister, we saw Mirage, that was just uh, one of the, those off games. Of Meister is back on this one map and he's doing work. And like you're saying, BP, 
throwing that round away just shows how broken they are right now and Fnatic are just one round away from getting into the grand final. Exactly that. Fnatic on 15, Virtus Pro a mere seven. Yet to make an impression on this half. Unable to slow down Fnatic. These boys have been absolutely on fire. But can Virtus Pro do anything to stop them? Or is this Fnatic just playing too hard, too fast, too good for them? We've got one minute to find out, Alex. And already Neo getting tested by Flusher. Yeah, we saw what Snacks could do in that very position just around before. Two Molotovs, they make it difficult for Taz, but not hot enough as he does find one onto JW. Manages to avoid one, make two flashes as he knows that's three. He's managed to avoid them all and does keep fragging as he gets Pronax, but Cribs and Olaf come alive. And now Snacks and Neo have to do everything to keep Virtus Pro chances at the grand final alive. It's all on Neo. Look at this play. He takes down the bomb, but now Snacks 1v2. 30 seconds, Olaf is the man to do it, and Fnatic are making their way to the finals here. Virtus Pro crumble under the sheer pressure Fnatic Pro on that T side. Outstanding play. And they will go on to meet Envy, setting their sights on the French. They'll have been watching that game closely. And it looks to see another grand final will fill the Lanxess Arena not too long's time. And just a big shout out to Virtus Pro as well. They, they, I feel like they played an amazing series, just not going the, the extra mile there on Cobblestone, but throughout the uh, Mirage, extremely well. It's, it's been a long time since I actually saw them perform to that level. And then going into Inferno as well, 16 14 in favor of. Fnatic and then Cobblestone, just probably energy was all drained and Fnatic obviously used to having played to all three maps, very, very, very solid through the, the last two maps and then all of my are coming alive. An all too familiar position for Virtus Pro as well, that third, fourth finish here in the semi-finals, again it is Fnatic that makes it difficult. And of course the fans Backing up Virtus Pro there, but you have to give credit to Fnatic. They played brilliantly. They came back from a moment that most wouldn't be able to. Once you see some teams in these positions, make sure you give it up to those guys there because they do deserve what they just won. I want to hear this crowd just as loud as for, for the Fnatic as they were for Virtus Pro going forward. Absolutely. The mental fortitude required to get through that Inferno game and then bring that pace in towards Cobblestone. Fnatic are your victors and it's time to hear what Olof and OJ have to say on the stage. So Olof, that was stressful, it was emotional to watch. What was it like to play? Come on, there's only great games here. We don't have booing in esports, no booing in esports. Olof, talk to me, what was it like to play in that match? It was a great thing to watch. Uh, it was uh, hard uh, mentally to play that game. Uh, we, we... Come on, guys, it was a great match. You have to cheer for both teams in great matches like that. Talk me through, what was it like to play? It was hard uh, mentally to play that game, but uh, we... Guys, please respect for the finalists. Second finalists, please respect them. Amazing words from Taz, amazing words. That's what makes this sport great. Told me through, it was hard mentally. It was hard mentally to play that game, but uh, we have played so long and we have uh, done so many comebacks, so we always, uh, we always uh, believe in ourselves. So. Well, you say you believe in yourself, though. Watching that second map, though, was there a moment that you thought, we could be losing this here? Before the pause, yes. But uh, after the pause, no. <laughs> or, yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, before the pause. What is it about the pause then? We see so many times that there's a pause and then suddenly the team that had the pause comes back and wins the round. What is it you talk about? What is it you do to make that win happen? Well, I think it's... Um, we talk what we do wrong and we adapt to the other team, but also if you take a pause to stop their momentum as well. Final question. You're through to the grand final of ESL 1. It is a big major. You're going for history here. Are you, has that taken anything out of you? You're going to be going against Envy, who's watched that. They've sat down, they're relaxed. You've got to play in an hour's time. Has that taken anything out of you? No, we're, we're, we're here and we're ready to play final and we're really excited to play. We're happy to be here, so we're just happy. Do you know what? We are excited about the final. I want a massive round of applause 
not just for Olaf, not just for Fnatic, but for VP as well. The final is coming! And with that, Fnatic continues the dream towards a back-to-back -back major title, a back-to-back -back ESL1 title here at ESL1 Cologne. What a match, though. Both semis now going to three maps. We, we do want to move to the finals very quickly, but let's recap that last one on Cobblestone here. Katie, and start us off. Yeah, it was a crazy game. Be Virtus have a, had a very great beginning here. Yeah. You were considering if it was going to be another Virtus plow, but Fnatic made the comeback. They started to be a lot more stronger on their rotations, etc. And they just played the Terrace half insanely well as well. I mean, JW maybe bought the shotgun once or twice too much, but <laughs> I was surprised by the CT rounds, and especially Flush has stepped up and had a lot of high-impact rounds. Yeah, we said backstage, as long as they got eight rounds on the board, I think they'd be absolutely fine. We know how strong their terrorist side was, and it just came down to the angels. If you look at the, school, the scoreboard there, everyone was stepping up a fanatic. There wasn't one player standing out. They were all doing fantastic there, and that's what it came down to in the end. That's what the fact that they were missing on Mirage, and then it, it kind of picked up on Inferno, and then it really came into fruition on Cobbles. That's what changed for them. So Moses, as the man who kind of predicted how this match was going to play out, how did you view that last one on Cobblestone? Uh, it was, uh, it's just really Fnatic putting a stop to that plow. I mean, it, it was grounded for two maps, and then once that pause came about on Inferno, like from there, it was just all Fnatic. Uh, Olaf Meister was showing up, Crims was beast mode, you know, the, the quiet guy that you don't really sometimes gloss over just on accident because he's not flashy. You've got JW, Flush, Olaf, Meister, but it's like you kill those guys and then there's there's Crims you still have to deal with. And that's the strength of Fnatic. Uh, and I think part of the key to them being successful on Inferno was, um, or Virtus Pro on Inferno for some time was, you know, they would get those opening kills and then they would finish off the rounds. And they started out that way on Cobble, but then Fnatic just kind of turned it around. To, to draw a comparison of this third map, it actually reminds me a bit of the Inferno game against Envious and uh, TSM because in, oh sorry, the cash run, where Envious ran away with all the close rounds, all the clutches. Yeah. Sure. All of a sudden we saw a change of that in this one where Fnatic were winning all of them. We saw Neo losing that one and two. We saw the round where Flush had made those plays in the two and three as well. And that's the round which is really changing the game. Well, that's in this level of competition, that can be the factor that separates these two teams. When they're right. so evenly matched, the one-on-one -on -one clutches, that can define the whole game. So that's a very important factor to mention. Yeah, well, it's it's been an amazing day so far. And and as Taz said himself, I mean, now we're looking to the finals, back-to-back -back finals here for Fnatic, and it, it should be another great match to look forward to. Talking about Taz, I mean, can you have anything else in respect for this guy? I mean, yeah, what a guy. What he just did, I mean, I was, I was, I don't know if you can say disappointed, but I, I don't want anyone to be booed at, at an eSport event. Fnatic don't deserve it, no one deserves it, but the heart of Taz, it's just strong, you know? Yeah, I mean, to even after that last, to remember that Listen, we're still here, 11,000, 1 million strong watching online to watch a final coming up for a full day that was dedicated to Counter-Strike in the Lanxus Arena. I mean, let's go back to that, right? Quite frankly, we, we could have any two teams from the top 16 here, and it would have been a pleasure to yeah. look forward to. So props to VP, too. I mean, the fact that, let, let's give them some credit here. Even if they lost, and sure, we're talking about Fnatic coming back, and now they're looking in form for the final, but it didn't look that way in the beginning. VP made a big run this major. They, no one expected them to make it this far. Yeah, the way they played in those first two maps in this final, they would have beat any team in the world except for maybe the two teams we have in the finals right now. Uh, and it's just uh, that they couldn't bring that over into Kabul. I mean, all the credit to them, but Fnatic just stopped them cold. Yeah, I mean, and that, of course, when we talk about the maps, again, those are some of the other factors, Henry, as you were mentioning. Maybe when it comes down to those pressure moments, when it comes down to the map pool, yeah, everyone's good at maybe at, when you're top four, good at all seven maps, so who's slightly better at all like five or six, seven of them? That's when we start seeing those differences. Of course, TSM made it quite far too, credit to them, but now it's gonna be Envious versus Fnatic. What do you guys think, just quick impressions, of course, we'll have, we'll have a little bit more time to break this down later, but now that we know the matchup for the finals. Finally, 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 <laughs> since the Envious lineup has been announced, I've been waiting for this matchup, and what a stage for it to be played out on. 11,000 here, over 1 million wow. watching from home. It's gonna be insane. We have all the great individuals. We have the Olaf Meister, Kenny S, Apex. You can draw any player out of these 10 and it's gonna be absolutely insane. Yeah, that completely summarizes it. It's gonna be so exciting to see how this unfolds. I couldn't even give you a prediction. It literally could go either way. They're so evenly matched. Both teams now picking up some great form towards the end of their, but both of their series. So stay tuned. This is gonna be yeah. an absolute barn burner. Moses, what about you, man? 
Yeah, th I, this is so much aggression out of Envy. This is just going to be really fun because this is a team that is going to always, always take the fight to Fnatic. And these are two teams who are very good on uh, on four spies and on low economy situations. So it's like we might not ever see a save round in this. I mean, not literally, but <laughs> there's going to be very few save rounds. This is just going to be a bloodbath. It's, it's slugfest. They're just going to go back and forth because neither team is going to want to give up the slightest advantage to it. Yeah, it, man, it's it's been an exciting day to and to finally have both semis also go to three maps after the quarters where we were like, oh man, it could actually most of them can all go to three and we have very close ones, but they all turned out to be two zero. I think everyone can rest assured it's gonna be a spectacular match of fireworks. But before we get there, also in the beginning of the day, we've been reminding you guys to vote for your favorite player in the semifinals, in the top four out of the 20 players. Who's your favorite when you're watching from home? Who are you rooting for the most? And that vote has closed. So before we move on to the finals and celebrate the culmination of this major at ESL1 Cologne 2015, we also want to commemorate the fan favorite, the Aces fan favorite from this week at ESL1 Cologne 2015. OJ, please tell us who it is. Jobra, thank you very much. Obviously, the fans mean so much to esports, and your voting on this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. As Chobra said, the vote is closed, which means Johan, who is from Asus, it's time to tell us who has been voted the fans' favorite. Yeah, the fans' favorite is Pasha from VP. Thank you very much. So Pasha from VT has been voted the fans' favorite. An absolutely fantastic choice as well. Now he Obviously, it's just been through a very emotional game. Didn't want to come back on stage right now, which I'm sure you can understand. We will pass on the prize he's won. Though, what is it, Johan? It's an Asus Zen pad. So, yeah, I hope it will be good for him and he will be a little happier then. <laughs> it's a little silver lining for him. Thank you so much to both Johan and Kata, who are both from Asus. I'll pass it back to you on the NVIDIA desk right now, Chobra. Thank you.